Hi, I'm Craig Price with Surface Water Solutions. It's Boxing Day here in Australia. I've been here over 10 years now and I still don't know what you're supposed to do on Boxing Day, but my clients have the day off today, so I'm gonna make some videos. Uh, it has been quite a year. I started this channel the day HECRAS 504 was released. That was just over two years ago. Um, thanks to you, our subscribers and our followers, we've had a couple of hundred thousand views already, so thank you. Uh, Chris and Ben have been adding some great content with the Full Momentum Vodcast. I do hope you've had a chance to watch some of those. Um, I actually haven't added any of my own videos yet this year, um, since I kept thinking the release of 5.1 or maybe 6.0 would uh, make them obsolete as soon as I posted them. Uh, so I was holding out, but here we are at the end of the year uh, with 6.0 beta having just been released. I do think it was well worth the wait. Um, you can be the judge of that yourself after giving it a test drive. Uh, if you Google HECRAS download, you'll get the latest. Everybody gets to be a beta tester on this one. Now, I'm going to highlight some of the new features over the next couple of days, um, starting with a 3D viewer, which you see here. Um, I do want to keep this around 10 minutes, um, so I'll dive straight into this. But if you want a little more background on the uh, models that I'm using here uh, to pull in, I'll uh, show you a few examples here. Uh, if you Google HECRAS Pub and Grub, you'll see five or six different different uh, models that we presented at the Pub and Grub about a year or two back um, around the world and in other worlds. Um, I'm taking two of these models today and just pulled them into HECRAS 6.0 and I'll open them up in the 3D viewer to show you a couple features there. Uh, likewise, with this model of the Alps here, I've got uh, in Europe this big flood coming in uh, with some dams and canals that we've dug. Uh, this is one if you just Google HECRAS German, you should be able to see some background on this model here, which again, likewise, I'm just pulling into 6.0 and opening up in the 3D viewer. Now, you see an example of the 3D viewer here. This is uh, the Bay Tsunami. I posted this one on the Facebook HECRAS page um, a few weeks back, and uh, it's one that uh, brings in a tsunami under the Golden Gate Bridge, actually goes over the Golden Gate Bridge, floods out um, Alcatraz is underwater there, comes around, goes up through Vallejo. There's the H see offices there um, just staying dry. There's Mount Shasta with a um, five to one vertical exaggeration, which is, uh, I guess, the default, which we can change here in the 3D viewer. So let me open up um, some of these models here and I'll show you the examples that we're looking at. Um, this is now uh, the tsunami that I showed you uh, coming in from the San Francisco Bay and you'll see it flooding the Central Valley here as well and coming back down. So this is RAS Mapper as we've always been able to look at it, at least for the couple of last couple of years. This is now the Lake Bonneville model, um, which is a geological lake that then breached out into the Columbia Gorge um, and the remnants are the Great Salt Lake. Um, one thing that, um, actually before we go in and do our uh, flight path, uh, try zooming in here, there's the San Francisco Bay. Um, so again, if I just zoom into the uh, Bay Area here, you'll see where we're at. And if I take the features button here and right click on it, I can create a new layer. Now, uh, the polyline layer here, um, I'm going to make a Frisco Bay layer and start out at the in the ocean and come across through the Golden Gate Bridge um, off to your right. If you wave to Davis, you'll see the HEC team there. Come back through Vallejo and that'll be our flight path. So I will save that and move, uh, you know, stop editing to save it. And then we'll go ahead and open up the 3D viewer. So you have to choose the plan to view. Um, the one we're using here is called the Bay Tsunami. It doesn't always go that quick, um, but I've run it before and that's why it's running very fast now. The first time it'll be slower. Now I'm using the middle mouse button here to pan around or I can use the keys A, D, W, and S to move up and down. Um, that's, uh, you know, still looking straight down on this one. I'll show you how to add some keys to rotate it, but um, the default also has the left control key to move down in elevation and the space key to move up. So that's, um, this, this model right now doesn't have any water in it. You don't see the water, but I'm just now following the flight path. So I clicked on the button to start that flight path, 
turning around and heading back out to the ocean. So with that, then um, I can change with my middle mouse button. If I hover there over the um, number, I can change the angle and that way I can see the horizon as well. So I'm going to restart this one again and play this. Um, it's going a bit fast, but I can use the left arrow key to slow down, use the right arrow key to speed up. And you can see in the inset map here where we are as we turn around. Um, as, as I turn around here, I guess, um, you know, now I'll, I'll bring some water in just by taking the animation, you know, the, the scroll bar there and moving it. Um, then you can see the water come in and lapping at the, uh, on the hillsides. Um, so if I drag that scroll bar, you can animate the results. I'll do this again, restart it, come in and kind of chase the flood here with my flight path. So the flood's coming in and then I'll just let it recede and just run it in reverse. Now you can see my graphics card's having trouble keeping up with it. I'm running this off a thumb drive, so um, it's uh, it's not going to be very, uh, you know, a very good, good or quick rendering. Um, so you can right click and drag or you can assign keys to rotate like this. Um, and uh, again, I'll now I'll just use a static image, bring it in and back out again, uh, just to show you at a particular time step here that we can turn particle tracing on. Uh, again, with the rendering here, it's not coming out all that great, but um, yeah, it's 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 still fairly uh, fairly good. Um, the controls here, I'll show you these. Um, if I go and change the controllers, this defaulted to unbound, and so now I've used the Q and E key. For the right and left turn um, that's just because they're next to the w and it just makes it easy um, to control so coming back out of this um, i'll pan back around and uh, show you the same uh, features here but with that um, lake bonneville model um, create a new flight path in this case i'm going to start at the grand canyon so I'll call this the Grand Canyon. That'll be the layer name, and it'll show up under Flight Paths. Um, this is now a new a new feature that uh, you wouldn't have had before, uh, 6.0. And so again, I'll start editing the same way we've always been able to edit, um, at least since 5.04, with doing um, shape files. And I'm just going to choose a path here, going straight along the Grand Canyon. Um, that's where we do our dam breach course uh, and then I'll take a take a, a tight bend here you, you can curve these around a little bit but the more vertices you get it actually gets a bit jumpy so I prefer the sharp breaks in the flight path because it still smooths you out there um, versus a bunch of vertices trying to make a curve. So I'm coming right through point of the mountain there on the, um, through the by the Great Salt Lake, then up along the Snake Gorge, and then right around, let's go through the Bridge of the Gods there, through the Columbia Gorge, uh, through Portland and out to the Pacific Ocean. So I'll save that one, stop editing it, and um, there's our flight path. So with that, then I'll go back in and uh, same thing, choose the different uh, plan though this time. Bonneville Dam Breach is the one I'm picking on the 3D viewer. If you look in the manual, there's three different ways to get to the 3D viewer. Um, this is one of them. Now, it just, it came up blue, but look at the elevation down here. If I use the middle mouse button there, it's going to um, allow me to adjust the elevation. And so I'm just going to scroll that down until you can actually see it. So if you're having trouble seeing it, just use the middle mouse button and you should be able to adjust your elevation. So again, it's going to default back to my old um, uh, flight path. So I'm pulling Grand Canyon in here now. I'm going to change the pitch so it doesn't look straight down anymore. It's not orthogonal. And when I hit go, it's back up to the high elevations again. So I'm going to use this time the control key to lower myself down um, and to lower the elevation. And um, you can see here, uh, it gets a little bit jumpy, but there's the Grand Canyon. So we're flying over the Grand Canyon. I don't have any water in this yet, um, but we've got some fun things we've done with Grand Canyon dams uh, in the past. I might pull some of those into some future models. But let's now, um, as, as we come across here, um, you can you can see uh, where the water is going to go, and then we'll turn the water on. Uh, look at the five to one exaggeration on Mount Hood and Mount Rainier. Um, coming up through the gorge, there's the Willamette Valley. So we reset this. If I just come and watch this statically, not following the flight path, um, I can see this, uh, you know, Lake Bonneville up to its historical shoreline where you have the benches. Um, and let's find out where it's flooding here. Um, I'll back this up just a bit. And you can see I've put in a couple hundred meter high dam there uh, along the Snake River. And then let's let it breach. It'll do it uh, pretty much instantaneously. <laughs> and then off it goes uh, all the way down the, the gorge. And then it's, um, if we start playing this here, you'll see if I 
chase this flood. It actually floods up the Willamette Valley as well, up to Eugene, I think, um, uh, the way the Missoula floods did. Maybe we can get Chris to do an animation of the Missoula flood model as well. Um, the particle tracing in here, let me just zoom in on this area here, and you can see um, this is where the breach occurs. Um, if, I, if I'm doing the entire model, the particle tracing doesn't re, uh, do very well. Um, I'll turn it on here just so you can see what's happening. Um, it, it's, you know, it, it does it in pieces. Um, it's it's kind of cool. You can actually see some uh, transparency there in that part of the, uh, the, the water. But anyway, um, we'll come back out. Now, this is moving over to Europe. You can see the inset image here of uh, Germany. Um, and... In this case, I've brought in this massive tsunami um, that comes up and hits the Alps. It's only 800 meters high, uh, but that's what it takes to get there. Now, I can I can view this uh, again in uh, the 3D viewer, but um, I'll just show you an issue here. See there, I've got that flight path there. Um, let me go back to RAS Mapper, and you can see the the um, flood kind of come and go. Uh, and again, I've just made this one up, obviously. <laughs> uh, uh, this would be if a big asteroid hit out in the uh, Baltic Sea or something uh, in the North Sea there. If you, um, if you if we back back off of this one, um, we could try to turn on particle tracing and try to um, you know do a flight path. I was kind of hoping, uh, and you see, See that thing just stalled there. I, I, the reason this stalled, have a look at this. Um, this model itself uh, wasn't a big terrain file, only 180 megs, but the HDF file for the plan is over a gig, and then on the um, post-processing file, also over a gig. But have a look at the SQLite file that it makes when you open up 3D Viewer. 11 gigs for one file. So running it the way I am right now with my, the machine I'm running this on, uh, it's not great. Now I wanted to just, uh, actually my goal on this one was to make like a wingsuit flight, you know, if you see those things on YouTube and to go right through those canyons there. And these are some of the ones you take wingsuits down um, uh, in, in some of these uh, um, extreme videos. Um, Look at how slow it's going, though, and it's not rendering very quickly, again, because I've got 11 gigs in the background trying to process. Now, next, we're going to handle the raster calculator. That'll be one thing we do uh, on our next uh, next episode here. And I'll show you also some of the new features here with um, pulling in the energy gradients um, as well as a raster layer. So that is um, basically the, uh, you know, just an overview of the 3D viewer. So hopefully you can have some fun with that one. Um, if you have questions about it, you can go in and see the help menu in a couple of different places. Uh, as we've always been able to do before, uh, if you click on the help menu in HECRAS, you'll see you'll get right to this PDF file. Um, it'll take you right there. But you now have um, two different places, the repositories for the help uh, help menu items. Uh, one of them is on this Confluence uh, website. You can see the text, at least for this one, is um, identical. And um, that's where you can get in and see your key commands and everything else. So um, do have a look at this. Uh, again, some of these were unbound and we have bound them, uh, at least in the model that I'm running. Um, and uh, next, uh, I'll come in and actually I'll try and do this with a with a game controller. Um, I, I, I'm going to need to practice with that to, to get that going. So so um, the last thing I wanted to show you is just that if you're going to be running these things um, and showing them to clients or stakeholders, uh, you're going to want to record them, right? So, you know, having them uh, by themselves uh, and and just sitting there uh, on your machine is not necessarily going to help you all that much. Um, if you want to use them to communicate to clients and especially those who are potentially non-engineers, um, you're going to want uh, to pass them along. And so to do that, I would you, you can use whatever screen recording software that you're comfortable with. Um, I'm just using uh, PowerPoint at the moment, so um, that's why I'll do a screen grab of this because it's actually running and recording as um, as I'm showing here um, as we speak. So if you open a new PowerPoint file and just go to the insert menu and go to screen recording, um, you can get uh, the, uh, may, you, you may or may not want audio on, but you can select your area, record it, and then either just send the PowerPoint off to um, whoever needs to see it, or you can then right click on the image file or the video file that comes up, right click and save it as an MP4. So 
lots of fun uh, that we're having here. Um, I hope you're enjoying it as well. Um, hope you've had a great Christmas in this crazy year. Um, I'll come back on and do a couple of uh, a couple more of these uh, videos showing you some of the new features and the things that I've played around with. Um, do subscribe um, and uh, do attend some of the webinars coming up. Uh, we'll have the developers themselves um, uh, attending, I think, on some of the vodcast episodes as well as uh, some of our Australian water school uh, webinars coming up. So we are very excited about that. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, keep heck razzling and uh, we'll see you soon.